Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. This one has been requested honestly a lot more recently and it's scaring me a little because we're gonna be talking about all of the physical books on my TBR. Every single shelf or cubby has books on it that I have not read yet, even though this one specifically back here are all books that I've read, but there's a couple on there that are TBR books just because I wanted them with the other books. However, I set them up, as well as my pretty bookshelf that I love. There's some books that are just pretty that I haven't read yet, but there's the majority of those books on there are books that I absolutely love, my five-star reads. So there's also books on there that I have not read, and then the two cubbies or shelves that are under my windowsills, those two have all my TBR books. And some some of them are older TBR books that have been on there for a while, some of them are newer, some of them are books that I recently receive or get or buy get put in there, and there's a couple little cubbies that are not occupied with books because I am saving space for more books because it just gets overwhelming when there's no space left, you just keep accumulating books. And then obviously I have my TBR cart, which I didn't use for a while, I kind of just left books on there that were just really low in my TBR, but the ones on the top of my TBR cart are media TBR, the ones on the bottom are kind of, they've just been there for a while, so. That's the explanation of all of the books that are on my shelves. As you guys know, I like the bookshop. I like to compile books in my collection. I like to have books that are adding to my TBR. It's been an ongoing thing for years now where I will have books on my TBR that I really want to read, my physical TBR, but I will continuously go out and shop and buy new books. Then what happens is those books come home with me. They get delivered to my house. I buy them, whatever. And they get added to the top of my TBR because they are newer books. So the books that were on my TBR before those books came home with me, they're pushed down. And now I've had books compiled on my bookshelves on my TBR for so long now and some that I haven't gotten to and they've been there for a long time collecting dust at this point but that's just the cycle that's just how it goes so today i'm gonna go through every single book on my tbr with you guys i may give a little bit of an excuse of why it's still on my tbr let me know if you guys have read any of these books let me know if you think i should read any of these books especially if they've been in my tbr for a while and you see them please because some of these books i just have no desire to read but if you guys tell me that they're good or that i should read them i probably will eventually or maybe just move it a little bit higher on my tbr so now we're gonna get into every single one i am not taking them all out of my shelves because the thought of having to redo my shelves and put them back in my shelves is just like I'm lazy and I just don't want to do that. Let's get into all of the books that are on my physical TBR. Okay, so we're going to start with the shelves that are under my left windowsill. So I've actually separated this kind of by genres, I guess you could say. So the first shelf we're going through is some romances that are on my physical TBR. First one is Funny Feelings by Tara Do It. I've actually heard amazing things about this book, so I think I want to read this in the fall time. I don't know the cover is giving fall. Then I have Holding Up the Universe by Jennifer Niven. This is the same author as All the Bright Places, which I actually really enjoyed. And I saw this in Target and I just bought it one day. I don't know when I'll get to it, but I definitely want to. I really enjoyed her other book. There of Things We Know by Heart by Jesse Kirby. This is a YA romance. It's really, really short. This one I'll probably end up reading if I just need a short YA book in between some books. That's usually what I do with YA. It's like a palette cleanser type of book just because they're so fast paced and like easy to get through. Then I have Mine Would Be You by Kay Jamila. I have no idea what this is about. I think this is a reverse Grumpy Sunshine. I saw that Larry Reed's loved it. So I actually bought it randomly one day and I have not read it obviously since. So I have this. Then I have The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. It's actually been on my TBR for a very long time and I remember having it on like my immediate TBR. TBR for some months, like saying in my wrap ups and my TBR videos for the month that I want to read this next, and I never got to it. So I think I'm saving this for like the fall time now. Just I don't know, the vibe of it is giving me fall. And that's why a lot of these books are on my TBR, but I like to read them in specific seasons. So now that we're in summer, there's some books that I want to wait to read until like fall or winter. So that's that's some reasoning and some excuses behind some of these books. Then we have Everything, Everything by Nicola Yoon. This one I think is a movie or something, and I actually know like the ending of the movie and how it goes. So, like I'm not really intrigued or interested to read this at least anytime soon. Then I have I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. I've had a few people tell me that I really should read this. I think this is another YA, but it's something between twins, like a twin relationship. Then I have Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. I actually bought this because Larry Raids was talking about it and we were gonna buddy read the second one, but I never read the first one, so that never happened. So I have this on my TBR now. I have no idea if I'm ever gonna read this. I just can't see myself being in the mood for this. I don't know, maybe for a video. I don't know, we'll see. Then we have Gus by Kim Holden. This is the second book after The Bright Side by Kim Holden. It's about one of the male main characters in Bright Side. Which brings me to you by Steve Allman and Juliana Baggett. I don't know if it's why. A, but I know it's a romance and they send letters to each other or something like that. Okay, a copy next to that is actually like rollers, but also mixed in with some literary fiction and there's a non-fiction book in here. Some books I just don't know where to put them, but this is like the vibe that I put them with. So the first one I have is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I really do want to read this. I'm not into non-fiction, but I've heard incredible things about this and I really want to read her story. The Luckiest 
Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. This one I think just became a movie or a show or something, but this is a mystery thriller. And then we have If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I really want to get to this in the fall winter time. Like this is definitely on like my radar for that season. The Secret History by Donna Tart. This is actually my TBR like so many times over the last fall. Then we have The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I heard this is like an amazing, amazing, amazing book. Then I have Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. This is another thriller mystery or something like that. And I also heard this was absolutely amazing. So another one on my radar for the upcoming fall season. In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. I actually just heard Larry Reed talk about this recently and I really want to get to it and I'm excited to get to it. They Never Learned by Lane Fargo. I actually read about 75 pages of this book and I never ended up finishing it. It wasn't bad. It was really good. I liked the writing and the storyline was really interesting. This is another like thriller mystery type of book. I stopped reading because I wasn't in the mood for it while I was reading it, but it was really good. So I definitely want to finish this eventually. Then we have What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall, another mystery thriller. And then the last one in this section has been in my TBR. Probably the longest since I started making book videos and I always have people telling me that I need to read it and like why is it still on my shelf not read and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I know I need to read it. Okay so the other shelf underneath the romances are all of my fantasy books that I have. First one is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I actually was supposed to read this one Chris picked out my TBR whenever that was but I never ended up doing it but I really 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 want to read this again. These are all saved for fall winter if I want to get to them then. I'm not going to read any of these really probably recent. And then I have the last two in the Serpent and Dove trilogy. This is Blood and Honey and Gods and Monsters. And I have House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Craig. No idea what it's about, but I do want to read it. A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows by Holly Renee. I really love this cover. I think it's so cute. I have no idea what this is about either. And then I have Twilight. This, I really want to read the series because I only read the first one, I think, in middle school when it came out. Was it elementary school when this came out? It was so, so long ago. I was so young. I like barely remember anything about it. So I definitely want to reread this. Maybe rewatch it, but never hold me to watching things. If you think I don't read things, I will watching things is like another story. And I have Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard have that one. The first book in the Clockwork Angel Shadowhunter series. I want to read the series. I want to get into this series. It's a very long one. The City of Bones, Mortal Instruments, but it's also part of like the Shadowhunters. No series confuses me more than this one. I'm not sure why, but I have the first of both of them that I want to read. Then I have The Witcher by Andres Sapkowski. This one again, Chris picked out for me to read and I never ended up reading it. I don't think I'm going to. I think it's like a high fantasy, like very complicated, no romance. So like nothing about that is interesting or intriguing to me. So I may actually get rid of this. I'm not sure yet. And then I have the first book in the Zodiac Academy by Caroline Peckham and Suzanne Valenti. Okay, so here I have some either dark romances or the covers are just dark and they all look good together. So I put them together, but I have Don't Let Me Fall by Kelsey Ray. I think this is a love triangle romance. Then I have Dear Grumpy Boss by Julia Wolf. I'm assuming this is a workplace romance. Collided by Lauren Asher. This is the second book in the Dirty Air series. The first one was Throttle and I actually just read that. So I think I want to read this. Not soon, but like I want to read it. Well, obviously it's on my TBR. Then I have Consider Me by Becca Mack. I actually read, I don't know how many pages of this I read. I had to have read maybe like 20 pages. I didn't get very far, but it was cringing me out so much and I don't know if I'm gonna end up reading it, but it's I'm gonna keep it on my TBR just in case. Then we have Culty by Mariana Zapata. This one I think is like a sports romance. Devious Lies by Parker S. Huntington, which I love. Darling Venom as we know so I want to get to this it's just a really thick book. Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. This one I don't know I'm so intrigued by it and then also in this little cubby I have The Kind Worth Saving by Peter Swanson. This is actually a thriller mystery. The first one is The Kind Worth Killing and this is like the sequel to it. Then in this little cubby I have a bunch of mysteries and thrillers. I think this is a mystery thriller. I'm pretty sure this is The Cellar by Natasha Preston and then I have Watch Me Disappear by Janelle Brown. This was the one that I thought was Local Woman Missing and I don't know where that one is. I think it's on another shelf but literally literally had this for years at this point and this whole time I thought this was Local Woman Missing and I've seen Local Woman Missing so many places and everyone's saying like you should read it and stuff and I was like oh I have it one day I will and that's not this this is a whole different book Behind Every Lie by Christina McDonald Flight Attendant by Chris Bosch Bosch this one then I have Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Gillian Flynn? I'm not sure. The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. The Last Mrs. Parish by Liv Constantine, which I don't know if I'm ever going to read this because I heard it was really similar to The Housemaid and I hate reading mystery thrillers that are similar to others because then I like guess the whole thing and it's like ruins the whole thing. Maybe I will. I don't know. Shiver by Allie Reynolds was supposed to read this over the winter and never did. So now I have to save it because it also takes place in a storm. Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. And then I have The Maid by Nita Prose. Then we have some romances that I've been on my TBR for years and there's like one dystopian in here which i'm not sure why it's in this shelf but why are you here by brianna jean the maze runner i don't know why this is in this shelf my friend gave this to me to borrow to read because this is after i read divergent i really wanted to read more dystopian books like the old ones and i never read the maze runner so she let me borrow it and i have not read it so then we have the devil wears black by lj shen then rebel air by jane diamond 
Look at that cover. Maybe in Paradise by Libby Hubscher. This one looks like a fun summer read. Maybe I'll read that over the summer. I don't know. Meet Cute by Helena Hunting. The Kiss Quotient. I've had this on my TBR for so, 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 so so long someone we know by sherry lapina okay so that is actually a mystery thriller i think it's on the shelf because the spine is yellow and these spines are also yellow so it matches but this is definitely not a romance breaking all the rules by amy andrews shipped by angie hockman water under the bridge by kels and denise stone which i just read are scorching summer and this is the one that comes right before it a literary fiction i think this is the collected regrets of clover by mickey Romer. i got from book of the month and then the reunion by kayla olsen i also got from book of the month okay so now we have a bunch of romances redeeming Law by Francine Rivers. I think I read about page 97 of this book and I don't think this is a book for me. So I actually might be getting rid of this book and I know this is like a lot of people's like favorite romance but I just don't think it's for me so I may get rid of it. I don't know. Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson. I think this one I'm saving for the fall and the winter time too. Tooth, Truth, and a Lie by Meg Mitchell Moore. This is definitely not a romance. I think this is like a mystery but between two women. I don't know. One Summer in Paris by Sarah Morgan. Again, this is not a romance. Some of these just look like romances and I assume they are but this is not a romance. I think this is literary fiction. Then we have the flat share by beth o'leary i actually got i think i tried to read this like three different times and i got to page i don't know what it was maybe like 70 pages in something about this i could not get into i tried so hard all right these two have been on my tbr for so 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 long you were there too by colleen oakley the truth hurts by rebecca reed it's like mystery thriller type thing then we have these four books that were in my recent book haul business or pleasure by rachel lynn solomon mrs nash's ashes by sarah adler much ado about nada by uzma that summer feeling by bridget morrissey okay Moving on to the next shelf under the next window. So half of the shelf are books that I recently bought or like recently added to my TBR. The ones over there were like ones that literally have been on my TBR for a pretty long time or that I'm really saving for another season. Okay, so first shelf is a bunch of romances. To Have and to Heist by Sarah Desai. I love this cover. This cover's fun. The American Roommate Experience by Elena Armas is the same author as The Spanish Love Deception. The Last Time We Met by Emily Hutton. I'll Always Be With You by Monica Murphy. This is part of the Lancaster Prep Series. The Birthday List by Devney Perry and then another Devney Perry called Coach. Then we have Chase Chasing River by M.C. Sakala. This author, she actually was writing on Wattpad and she made her Wattpad story into a novel. She is so sweet and this is her debut novel. Meet Your Match by Candy Steiner. I think this is a hockey romance. And then we have Last Kiss by Laurelyn Page. And then First Touch by Laurelyn Page. Into the Tide by Laura Pavlov. So next to that cubby are a kind of like random mix of books. There's not too many in this cubby, but the first one is Under the Influence by Noelle Crooks. This is her debut novel. I think this is about an influencer or something like that. Brutal Prince series by Sophie Lark. I don't have the completed series and isn't she changing the covers? I don't know what's going on with this but I may have the first three and not the rest of them in the same cover. I may have missed the mark on this but I have the first three. I have not read this obviously. This is my physical TBR. Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. This is the one that I thought was the other book. Let me get it. Now do you understand why I thought that I had the Local Woman Missing this whole time? Like... Anyway, No Exit by Taylor Adams. I was gonna read this, but I think it takes place during a storm or something like that, so I wanna wait until the fall and the winter time. Okay, then we have some fantasy books. So The Book Eaters by Suni Dean. A Dream So Wicked by Tessanja Odette. This is part of the Entangled with Faye series. Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. Supernova by Marissa Meyer. Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I really wanna read this. I really love the cover of this. The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. And then Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. No, I have not read this yet. And then in its own lone little sad shelf is Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I didn't know where to put this, but I want to read this soon. So it's just on its own lonely shelf until I can add it to my like red shelf. Okay, and then sitting kind of by themselves on the top of this bookshelf is for summary romance books. And these ones I want to read for a video. So they're just on their own. <laughs> The first one is The Two of Us by Taylor Torres, and then An Unexpected Paradise by Chelsea Curdo. The Summer of Lost Letters by Hannah Reynolds, and then Summertime by Willow Astor. I love the covers of all of these. I love summer romance covers that are just like so fun and cute. I love these. Okay, books on my pretty shelf that I have not gotten to yet is the Pretend Your Mind series. I think this is a connected standalone or something like that by Lucy Score. She redid the cover. Pretend Your Mind, Finally Mine, Protecting What's Mine. I'm not sure what order they go in, but the covers are just so so pretty together i love the new covers that she's coming out with then i have crescent city and house of sky and breath by sarah j mess this one i really want to get to over the fall and the winter time i want to complete the sarah j mess universe before crescent city 3 comes out because i want to be 
I want to be in the know. Then I have Things I Wanted to Say But Never Did by Monica Murphy. It was also in the Lancaster Prep series. And this one, I started it. I got 100 pages in around that. And it's a bully romance. I don't know. I wasn't in the mood for something like this. Let It Fall by M. Phoenix. Okay, now on to my TBR card. These are books on the top two rows are the ones that I want to get to soon. The bottom ones are just books that have been in my TBR for so long. I didn't know where to put them. So we have The Girl He Used to Know by Tracy Garvis Graves. X's and O's by Amy Leah. Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. This is part of the Renegades series. A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey. Court of Solar Flames by Sarah J. Mass. One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. Crimson Kingdom and Obsidian Throne by Robin D. Mall and L. Madison. This is the Lachlan Feud series. This is book three and book four. Then down here I have the last two in the Natural series, All In and Bad Blood by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Maggie Moves On by Lucy Score. Scythe? I called it Scythe in a video, and it's not. It's Scythe. I just don't know how to pronounce things, but Neil Shusterman. King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair, and Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Anxious People by Frederick Bachman, and Flock by Kate Stewart. King of Wrath by Anna Huang, and Midnight Kisses by Janine Benedict. Billy Summers by Stephen King. Now, let's flip it around. Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. Blue Beat Show by Ellen Hildebrand. The Only One Left by Riley Sager, and Five Star Weekend by Ellen Hildebrand. Children of Fallen Gods by Carissa Broadbent. This one I started, I got halfway and I did not finish. I also have the third one and the last one in that trilogy, which is Mother and Death of Dawn in the War of Lost Hearts trilogy. I have not read this one, I forgot about that. The Problem with Forever by Jennifer L. Armantrout. This has also been in my TBR for like years at this point. The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. Promises We Meant to Keep by Monica Murphy. Again, the Lancaster prep series. And then I have A Little Life. So these I can't get out. They're like stuck because they're like double on both sides. So I'm just gonna have to read them off to you. History of Wild Places, The Book of Magic, Dating Dr. Dill, The Last Party, The Book of Cold Cases, Like a Sister, The Collective, Firstborn, Reckless Girls, Apples Never Fall, The Golden Couple, and Everything We Didn't Say. And then... You thought that was it. The Soulmate, The X Hex, Pineapple Street. And then over here on this side, there's a few like little random ones. Like I have The Last Song, The Notebook. I've never read these. I've watched those. Me Before You, also I watched that. Runaway Love by Melanie Harlow. Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Thousand Splendid Sons. The Liar's Crown by Abigail Owens. Cover is so pretty. Stealing Infinity by Allison Noel. So the shelf is majority books that I have read. I think there's only a couple on here that I haven't read. These ones are kind of stuck in there, but I have the last two in the Addicted Calloway Sister series, The Long Way Down and Some Kind of Perfect. I've read like 80 pages of The Long Way Down and I did not end up finishing it. So I have those two. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I think I got exactly halfway in this book. I got to page 165. It was too cozy of a fantasy for what I was reading or what I was in the mood for. Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh. This one is the second in the Boys of Tallman series. I got literally 415 pages into this and I didn't finish it. There's like 600 pages in there, but yeah. In this back cubby, I have Golden Girl by Ellen Hildebrand. I really want to read that soon hopefully before the summer ends. And then the last one I have is Bitter Blue by Christina Cashor. This is part of the Graceling series. I read Graceling for a Blind Dates with a Book video and I think this is the third one actually in it, but I have this one. Okay, now I'm gonna go count up all the books that are on my TBR and I will let you guys know what it is. <laughs> Oh wait, that's not it. I also have the Slam series by Colleen Hoover. I have all three of them and I also have Maybe Not by her that I haven't read. So those are also on my physical TBR. I don't know if I'm ever gonna read them, but I just have like a collection of Colleen Hoover books. So it's on my shelves, but I don't know. I forgot I have like a whole little Colleen Hoover section because I have so many of her books. Okay, now I'm gonna count them. Okay, do you guys have your guesses to how many books are on my physical TBR? There's 108. Oh my god, did I forget? I'm almost positive it's 187 books. I'm not recounting, so we're gonna stick with that. It's around 187 books. That's a lot. And why do I keep buying more? Why can't I just read these? You know? That's a question no one can answer. Those are all the books on my physical TBR. Let me know if you've read any of them. Let me know if I need to put some higher up on my TBR. It's hard because sometimes I read for videos, sometimes I'm mood reading and like different books are read at different times and some of them I have to wait to read because if I'm a mood reader and I want to read them in a different season, as I keep saying, you know, I have to wait. And I keep making excuses for these books, but there's no excuse. Like girl, just read them. Those are all the books on my physical TBR. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you did and yeah, I'll see you hopefully in the next one. Bye.